In this video, I want to talk about how to use AI as a render engine directly in Rhino. Once your 3D model is ready, you can just save your view, describe it, and render images like this within seconds. You can find the timeline of this video in down below. Let's start. First, setup. For this video, I will assume you have stable diffusion and control net models installed on your computer. If not, you can find the tutorial in the video description. Then go and run Rhino as an administrator. Make sure you run as an administrator just to be sure everything will work smoothly. We need a plugin to be able to run stable diffusion inside Rhino. You can install it directly from package manager. Or you can also find it from Food for Rhino website and then place it to the components folder of Grasshopper. This is the developer's website of this plugin, so thank you for sharing this. And lastly, we need the Ladybug component. You can find all the resources in the video description. Once you install everything, you will find these extra nodes in the Grasshopper. We need two main components from this ones launch ST local and the first one to be able to run stable diffusion inside Grasshopper. Before we continue, we should modify the web UI user file so we can access it inside Rhino. Go to your stable diffusion files, find web UI user, right click and then click on edit. And we should write dash dash API to this row. Then you can just save and close it. Now, we need to address this file inside Grasshopper. We can do this with a file path component. Right click and click on select the directory. Then just choose the file where you install stable diffusion and the components will find the necessary files inside automatically. I will just create a button so we can run the component. If you attach the panel to the output, as you can see here, it says the port is not available because Stable Diffusion is not running right now. Click on the start and it will automatically run the automatic 1111. Once we have this URL, it means it's ready. You can copy this and open it in your web browser. But right now we're gonna control it directly inside Crossover. If you check the same panel now, as you can see, it says port is available. So I have this file ready to use with all the components and settings we need. I will upload this file so you can find it in the description. In this part, you have access to all the classical stable diffusion settings. You can choose text to image or image to image versions with control net models. You can use these two panels to write positive and negative prompts. To start, we need to select the file where we want to save the generated images. Right click and choose select a directory. You can choose any file you wish. Let's test it first with text to image. I will write a basic description as my input here for a building in the city. Make sure text to image mode is selected. You can adjust the number of sampling steps and CFG scale in this part. Adjust the image size you want to generate. I will choose 512 to 512 for the first generation. And let's create four images. If you want to use a specific seed number, you can connect this slider here. Otherwise, it will use a random seed number. And let's hit generate. After a couple of minutes, here is our first image. You can directly see the results inside the Grasshopper. And you can change them from this slider here. This window is the only reason why we installed the Ladybug plugin. So even if you don't have it, you can still generate images, but you won't be able to visualize them inside Grasshopper. You can go to the file you choose in the beginning 
and then find the generated images there. Let's try to adjust all of the images we just generated with image image model. For this, we need the additional part so we can find the inputted image size and keep same aspect ratio in the final image. So replace the image size input with this one here. Go ahead and choose the image you want to edit with the image to image mode. I will choose one of the images we just generated and try to edit the colors. Once you choose it, it will appear in this window so you can easily see your input image. When you change it to image to image mode, you will get this error because the base image is not connected. You can change the image size in this part but it will keep the image ratio the same as the input image. And lastly, Adjust your text and hit generate. Here are some of the results. And now we came to my favorite part how we can use this as a render engine for Rhino. To test this out, I will model a simple pavilion model in Grasshopper. But of course you don't need to do this, you can use any of your 3D models. When my model is ready, first I will go and create a new file to save our base images. To be able to connect the Rhino view to the stable division, we need this additional script. Go ahead and select the file we just created in this part. Once you find a nice view for your model, save the view. I will call it view1 and we should write the exact the same name of the view in this panel so we can access it in Grasshopper. When you turn on this toggle, it will save the view port as a JPEG so we can use it as a base image. So let's connect this to use it as a base image. After you connect, you can see in this window your inputted image. And again, same as our previous test, we can adjust all of the settings in this part. I will choose the control net depth model. It really works nice with 3D models. But feel free to experiment with all of them and see which one works best for you. Then I describe my render and generate and here is our render i think it looks absolutely amazing on the first try and we just created it in seconds but i wanted to see some buildings at the background so i just added some blocks to my 3d model when you make some changes to your model you should update the view port you can just move this slider one step and it will automatically update the view you can attach a panel to check the file name to make sure it is the correct view After that, I generated a couple of different renders while I adjusted the settings. Then I wanted to edit the model and I added this inclined column for my design. And this time, let's create a portrait render. Once you find a nice view, save it and just hit generate. A few moments later. And let's check all the renders we created. So what do you think about this use case of AI as a render engine? I think it's such a powerful tool. The only downside I can think of can be the amount of accuracy and the control over the final image. But it is improving every day with the new extensions and developments. Do you think you will try to use this in your next project? I am planning to do a comparison video between a classical real-time render engine and this one. Is that something you will be interested in? Please let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you can check my previous video. See you in the next one.